expect, to anticipate all the things that the Lord has in store for 2023. There's a few things that I want to talk about today as we just get ready to change the order of the service. One big one is that we are entering our 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you didn't get one of the fasting sheets at the back, I encourage you to pick one up on your way out. On it, you can find different information for different types of fasts that you can do over the 21 days. I encourage you to do something that you are capable of doing, but also that is sacrificial. Amen. Also that is sacrificial. And so even if you switch it up a little bit here and there as you go, do something that is fasting throughout the 21 days. Give up some other things as well and, and fill up some of the time where maybe you would have been doing other things with seeking God. Amen. 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 Because we also want to take prayer very seriously over these next three weeks especially. Because what did the Bible say would happen when we seek the Lord? We would find it. Amen. If we seek, we'll find. And if we seek after God, I, I know that there's things in the spirit that the Lord is just waiting for the church to get hungry enough to go after and lay on to and grab hold of. Because he wants to release and manifest his glory. Amen. In this year. Amen. I found a song that I've been listening to. It's a Spanish song. But the, the, the song says... Yahweh will manifest himself. And I just love that so very much. And I thought, what an awesome declaration that is for 2023. That Yahweh will manifest himself. Hallelujah. He will manifest himself. And he will be known in the earth. Amen. As the glory of the Lord fills the earth. Hallelujah. So 21 days. So on our Wednesday nights, we're going to be prayer in prayer here at the church. And so I encourage you to come out. Again, don't take that lightly. Come join in and pray. And let, let's come hungry. And let, let's come with, with, with a stirring that we go after God. Amen. And seek the Lord for revival. Yes. Amen. Amen. I believe that that's the time. I don't just say something like that all the time. But I believe this is the time right now. Pray for revival. Pray for revival. Amen. Because he wants to revive his church. Amen. Praise the Lord. He wants to revive the church. Amen. And the great things that follow when the church is revived are so awesome. Amen. I wanted to make mention a few people to pray for today because there's a few people not feeling well. Let's remember Shirley Pelton in prayer. She's not feeling well today. Let's remember Scott. They couldn't be here today because Scott is still recovering in the hospital. He's doing well, but he needs continued prayer. So let's remember him and Carol in prayer. Amen. That the Lord continue to raise up Scott. He continues to get his strength back in his legs. Amen. I know Jamie will hurt herself this week, but she's she's here, I think, still, regardless. And uh, she, there she is. Is up there. <laughs> Sorry to put you in the spotlight like that. <laughs> Amen. She, she made it to church regardless of how she was feeling. Uh, and there was a uh, bunch of others that texted me today that, that told me they wouldn't be here. And so as much as I don't like to get those texts, I also appreciate those texts when people let me know that they're not going to be here. <laughs> but it's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, God is so good to us. We just love the Lord. A little bit later, we're going to be receiving communion as well. But at this time, we're going to receive the afternoon tithes and offering. If you have your offerings today, we just want to bless the Lord together as we just continue to worship. Amen. Let's give this unto the Lord today with a heart of expectation, knowing that God is faithful. God is faithful.
Lord, before you are seated, my friend, I'm just going to ask you to bless me. So I better mention also that the fast officially starts tomorrow. So it goes from January 2nd to the 22nd. I encourage you to grab one of the sheets on the back because it will certainly be helpful to you as you figure out how you're going to go about your fast. But seek the Lord with expectation. Amen. And know that there's going to be some wonderful things come out of this. And I know, I know it in my heart that there is. As I began to pray just before church. I just felt like the Lord was already beginning to open something up in the spirit. I could just, as I was just saying, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I, I found myself saying, oh, what joy. Oh, what joy. And the more I said it, the more I felt it. Oh, what joy. Oh, what joy. And the Bible says that there is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There, there's some things that maybe people can find temporary happiness, but there is joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. I said there's joy in the Lord. Amen. I love that song that says there's joy in the house of the Lord. Amen. I've got to learn it actually. <laughs> On the 22nd as well, which is the last official day of the fast, Pastor RJ is going to be here and he's going to be ministering as well. And so we're excited for Pastor RJ to come again. We love the big viewings very much and I'm excited for them to be with us. If you have your Bibles with you today, you can turn to Matthew 6, although I'm likely to start preaching a little bit before I start reading that. There's a few things that I just want to make mention of as I just get into this message today. A few things that I think are worth mentioning as we start off a new year. I want to minister to you today on Jesus first living or living a Jesus first lifestyle. Jesus first. Those words are very powerful, but if we don't comprehend or get a hold of a picture of what that looks like, we can miss the impact of what it really means to live a Jesus first life. When we prefer him before other things, before other people, and before ourselves. But as, as I get into that, I, I wanted to just make mention of a couple of things here as we are entering this brand new year, starting it out fresh. And I think we need to talk about thankfulness just for a moment. Because as we enter the new year, of course, we just closed out another And I would be amiss if I did not say or just take a moment just to say thank you, Lord, for your hand upon us in 2022. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God, for taking care of us. Yes. Thank you for the grace that was there for us. Yes. Whether it was hard, whether it was easy, whether we considered it good or bad, you were a good God that worked in the midst of it all. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody here today that would just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, that we closed it out with health. Thank you, Lord, that we closed out the new year with a heartbeat still in our chest. And here we are today to praise you, Lord. Thankfulness is powerful. The Bible said that in everything that we are to give thanks. It didn't say for everything, but in everything, give thanks. In every circumstance, give thanks. In every situation, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus, meaning what? It's God's will that we're thankful. Yes. That we recognize that at every moment and every day, and that there is always opportunity to bring thanks to the Lord because He is always faithful, He is always present, He is always God. Amen. Thankfulness is powerful. It positions us. In the proper place, it, it refocuses us, gives us clearer perspective when we're thankful.
thankful. It focuses us in on the things that really matter and the things that are most important when we're thankful. When it's the opposite and we're grumbling and we're contrary, we focus in on the wrong things. We strain at gnats. Hello, somebody. We strain at gnats. We allow molehills to become mountains. And then when we face mountains, we most certainly feel overwhelmed because we didn't even handle the molehills right. <laughs> and we made the molehills so big that when mountains come, we, we don't know what to do. But the psalmist said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Amen. So thankfulness will give us a clear and a, and a, and a, a focused perspective. As you begin to live a Jesus first lifestyle, some folks will call you extreme. <laughs> and, I mean, people want to throw that word out like it's candy anyway. Everybody's extremists. You know? yeah. Not to say that there isn't some. But, but are you thick enough skin, skin thick enough? I hope you want to say that. Is your skin thick enough? That someone would label you that. Oh, you're so extreme. One of those Jesus fanatics. One of those crazy Jesus freaks. Now, now, I realize that there is some people that have claimed the name of Jesus and acted the fool. Amen. I'll say it again. There are some folks that have claimed the name of Jesus and acted the fool. Yeah, amen. Professing themselves to be wise, they, they were only seen as foolish and, and really bringing a reproach. But there is the other hand. When you focus in and you start seeing things differently than those around you, because of what is filling up your heart, because your mind is being renewed and you are connected to God, you are stepping outside of the ordinary. Yes. Amen. You, are up, you are stepping outside and upsetting the apple cart sometimes. Hallelujah. And so people will think you to be extreme. But if you're extreme on fire for Jesus, don't let anything or anybody put out your flame. Be filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. and fire. Yes. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Because I want you to know today that the world needs the church. Yeah. It needs a spirit-filled church. Yeah. It needs a spirit-led church. Yes. It needs the blood pot church. It doesn't need the church that goes through the motions. It doesn't need the church that tries to act like something they're not. It needs the genuine, authentic. Holy Ghost Church. Being the bride of Christ, proclaiming the name of Jesus, passionate about preaching the gospel of Jesus, hungry to win souls because there's an urgency on the inside of us, knowing that the time is short and souls need to come to the cross and people need to be saved because people are dying and people are perishing. So when you adapt the kind of lifestyle that is Jesus first, it is opposite of what the world teaches us. Amen. Or what many would consider normal living. And I'm just so sick of normal living. I want Jesus living. Yes. Hallelujah. So in Matthew 6, I'm going to read from the 19th verse. This is such an awesome chapter. I mean, this whole chapter is just filled with such, such precious gems. But he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt. Continuing just to heap things up, it's become your passion, it's become your focus. It's where your desire is. You're trying to build a natural kingdom that's just going to perish. 
And where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust does corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart be, will be also. Amen. So what is the things in your life that is most valuable? What is, what is it that you think most important? I mean, what does your life speak of? If someone was, or if you were to step outside yourself for a few moments and just watch yourself live life. If you were to step outside yourself and just watch yourself live life, what would your life look like to the things that you treasure the most? The things that you love the most? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what are the things that you are putting the greatest value on? Some people put the greatest value on money. And not to say that money doesn't have uh, an importance or, or its place, but it's not the most important thing. Right. Right. Some people put the most emphasis and the entirety of their focus on being accepted. They want everybody to accept them. And they want everybody to like them. Yeah. And everybody, I think, would kind of prefer things that way. But yet it's not to be the object of our focus. And in fact, when you are actually taking your place where God has called you to be, there will be people that are on the other side of the scales that are opposing the things that God wills to do in you and through your life. Let me tell you today, if you have some enemies, it might be a good thing. It might be a good thing because maybe you've actually stirred something up. Maybe you've actually agitated the devil enough, amen, where you've started to break free from some of the old patterns of the life that you've been living and the enemy's angry about it, threatened by the soul winner that you can become, the tool of ministry that God wants to use you to be, the vessel of God, the light of the world, amen. We minimize so much what it means to be a Christian, don't we? I mean, we minimize it so much, but it is Christ in us the hope of glory we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ here on the earth and he wants to show his glory Amen. where your treasure is there your heart will be also the light of the body is the eye and if therefore thy eye be single thy whole body will be full of light so what are the things that is kept that is catching our eye but if your eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Mammon is like money. It's the God of this world. It's that, it's that, that system. It's that system. A Babylonian system. It's, it, it, it's Satan's kingdom. It, 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 it's a natural way. It's what he's tried to build to replace God. Yes. And though we navigate this life, it is important, it, 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 it is completely necessary that we learn to trust God. And rely on the Lord. And in all our ways acknowledge Him. And He shall direct our paths. As we navigate the things of this life. Amen. Whether it be business. Whether it be politics. Relationships. Whatever it might be. We've got to be holding on to God's kingdom. Seeking God first. As we navigate our way throughout our journey. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. That isn't that just the opposite of what comes natural? <laughs> take no thought for your life. What is he saying? Is he saying don't have any kind of plan and just wing it? No, I don't think that's at all what he's saying. But he's talking about worry. When we become worriers, when we become toilers, when we're filled with dread, when we're filled with anxiety because I don't know how I'm going to meet ends meet or make ends meet now. And I, 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 I don't know what's going to happen in this relationship. And I don't know what's going to come out. And we're so filled with angst. But he said, take no thought for this life. There's so many things that we worry and that we carry. 
so unnecessarily if we would turn them over to the Lord and trust in Him. Amen? I mean, how many things have you gone through, even in this past year, that you can look back over and say, well, maybe if there's one thing I would change about it, I wish I wouldn't have worried about it so much. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I wish I wouldn't have worried about it so much. I wish I wouldn't have let it take my peace. I, I wish I wouldn't have let it keep me up at night. Because you can look back over some things and think, how foolish was I? I could have leaned on the Lord. And now I'm on the other end. I realize God had me. And how foolish and how powerless our worry really is. That it doesn't change anything. But just takes us into wrong focus and bad perspective. Take no thought for your life. What shall you eat or what shall you drink? Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. This is some pretty extreme stuff here. This is probably why some folks would consider Jesus an extremist. It sounds so opposite of what is the natural way, the normal way to do life. Yeah. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about how you're going to pay your bills. Don't worry about how you're going to clothe your family. You say, well, isn't that my duty? No, your duty is not to worry. Hello, somebody. I said your duty is not to worry. Now, your duty might be as a provider, but your duty isn't to worry. Your duty is to trust the Lord. This is what we're talking about when we're talking Jesus first lifestyle and putting Christ first, first leaning on him and trusting in him to supply the rest. The blessings of God flow from the top down. There is an order of God. And so it's so important that we find ourselves placed in the order where he's called us to be, where we're submitting to him, aligning ourselves with him in our living, in our believing, and we're trusting in him, placing ourselves where the blessing flows. Because so many times we, we, we come out of order and try and take things in our own hands and get ahead of God. Anybody ever got ahead of God before? Try and take things into your own hands and get ahead of God instead of placing everything in God's hands and trusting in the Lord and doing the things that He leads you to do. Come on. Because there is a lot for us to do. A lot. And he's not telling us just become idle bystanders. But when you place him first and learn to be a spirit-led believer, there is so much to do for the kingdom of God. So much to do for him. The way that it can change your life, the way that it can change your family. Jesus first living. Jesus first living. I want this to get ingrained in people. I want you to get this deep in your heart. I want this to be something that starts to come out your mouth. Where you wake up and you think about this. Jesus first. Amen. Jesus first living. What does that look like? Apply to my life. Jesus first living. Amen. Living a lifestyle where I prefer the Lord. Where I love the Lord. Above all other things. He said, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not but much better than they? And which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. They're blessed. They're cared for. They radiate the glory of God in their beauty, the, what they are created to be. They don't toil. Your heavenly Father, well, let's go over right here. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, or people that don't know God. That's what they seek first. But you, some will say me, Seek ye first. Seek ye first. 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, <laughs> get this part. Someone read it out loud with me. And all these things shall be added unto you. I think we can do better. Let's all read it one more time. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Meaning he knows what you need. He's already seen it. He cares for you. He's not forgotten you. Yes, he's telling you don't worry. Yes, he's telling you don't trust him. But he knows the things that you have need of. Amen. And all these things shall be added unto you. And as you place yourself at the center of his will, in the order of God, the blessings of heaven flow down from the head, Jesus Christ, and they flow over our lives, filling up our lives so that we are filled and we are enriched so that we can flow or the blessing can continue to flow through our life and unto others. So seek ye first. Seek ye first, not second, not third. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Yes. So if we're to think of some of the things, you know, that, 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 that might consume our lives. Maybe it's our money. And maybe we're challenged to trust God in our money. We're challenged to give to the Lord. Maybe it's our time. And we just feel like our lives are so filled with other things that we don't have time for the Lord. But I just want to tell you today, if you'll just be honest with God with where you're at. If you'll just be sincere and true in, in, in seeking Him, He will help you to get things in their proper place. And maybe, maybe our life is just so filled with some unnecessary things. And a lot of things that we think are important, but really not that important in the grand scale of things. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a, a loaf of bread here with me today. Now there's ten slices in this loaf. And let's just say that this loaf makes up your life. This is, if you've got 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, this is, this is what you've got. The Bible said life is like a vapor. It's here today and then it's gone tomorrow. Yeah. What are we going to do with the life that's given to us? Because this bread can just sit there and it can become stagnant and it'll get moldy. <laughs> it won't be used for what it was made for. And then it's only, be good, it's only good then to be cast away and cast out. But born again, being born again, we're filled with the life of God and we're filled with the purposes of God. We're filled with God. Our life is filled with Him. But what are we going to do with what He's put in us? What are we going to do with our life now? What, what, what are we going to do with what God has invested in us? Because the world still pulls on us. The world still pulls out our minds, tries to get our attention, tries to get us fixed on other things so that we take our eyes off of the things that matter the most. I mean, it's sad that some of the most important things in life are, are so bottom on people's list of importance today. People allow money to tear their families apart. Don't talk to them, their siblings anymore because of frivolous things. But God is a God of reconciliation. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 I said God is a God of reconciliation. Amen. And it's not that every relationship in your life will be restored. But in every relationship in your life, there is need and room for forgiveness always. Yeah. Always. But I tell you today that God is in the restoration business. Amen. Come on, church. And a lot of the things that people let allow to become interference in their life and tear us apart are oftentimes the most petty things that are just foolish. And if we would love one another more than those things, more than our opinions, more than our agendas, we would be able to find ourselves reconciling. Amen. And, 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 and you know, family is beautiful. Tough crowd in here today. Y'all been fighting over the holidays, haven't they? <laughs> I said, family is beautiful. 
Family is beautiful. God is a God of family. He wanted his own family. He's called us his children. And beloved, now are we the sons of God. He's made us part of his family. His body. His people. His children. He is our heavenly father. He is a God of family. And he wants to move in your family. He wants to show you what your family looks like enriched with him. What your family looks like enriched with him. The difference it makes in your home when you live for God and how it works its way all down the ladder. Yes, amen. How when you serve the Lord and others they thought, well, they don't have any interest and yet they're watching you. Mm-hmm. And yet they're watching you when you serve the Lord and, and, and God doing things that you don't even see or you don't even recognize. There's people that are coming behind you picking up the breadcrumbs. And the trail that you're blazing for your family. And some people are trailblazers in their family. No one else in their family ever served God. But God ransomed them out of there. And now they're a trailblazer for Jesus. They're making the way. They're breaking off generational curses. Amen. They might stumble. They might struggle here. But they, 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 they learn. They repent. They, they, they grow, they, they, they collect themselves, and they, they keep on going. We need to be trailblazers. Yes. And even if we come from a lineage where people have served the Lord for maybe many generations like mine. My grandfather came off the coast of Miramichi in New Brunswick, where, where it's, to my understanding, was the first place where the Holy Spirit was really poured out in the nation of Canada. So my grandfather was a preacher. On my grandmother's side, her father was uh, a mighty man of prayer. My father was a preacher. And then I came out and I was crazy. (laughs) No, I was a, a, you know, I was a wild teenager. But God always had his hand on me. And he brought me out of that. And he set me on fire for him. And I haven't looked back since. I said I haven't looked back since. And though that might be in my lineage, I only want to trailblaze deeper than any of those that have gone on before me. I want to grow in the knowledge of God and advance because I realize that we're living in the last days. And the king is coming. And he's getting ready to make his return. I don't want to fall into the void of this world. The darkness that is around us. That will eat up your years. It will. It will eat up your years. It will eat up your life. But today, you can make a decision that you will serve the Lord. That you will say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And maybe your children are at an age now where where they are entering adulthood or they already have. And and maybe they're struggling in their faith. Or you see them going in another direction where you keep on making that declaration. It doesn't matter if they're adults now. You keep on declaring, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God, I thank you. You've got your hand on my kids. I thank you that they're going to come into the kingdom. I thank you that they're going to serve you, Lord. Be a trailblazer for your family. Come on, somebody. I said be a trailblazer for Jesus. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And God frees us up to go into places where we were once restricted to go. And break free from the things that once held back us or held back our families. And he'll break off of you the spirit of poverty. Someone should have said amen to that. I said he'll break off of you the spirit of poverty. He'll break off of you the spirit of depression. 
He'll break off of you the spirit of fear. But you can't quit. You can't take your eyes off of Jesus. You've got to keep on pressing in and pressing towards the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Keep on pressing in. Keep on blazing the trail. You don't always got to follow the beaten path, but follow the straight and narrow way. <laughs> Amen. Come on, church. I'll say that again because that, that's worth repeating today. I said you don't always got to follow the beaten path. You know, I thought peer pressure was only for teenagers. Turns out that's not true at all. Peer pressure's for you as long as you're alive, isn't it? People still pressuring you. Still feeling that, the weight of that, trying to live up to them, where they're pulling you, sometimes the opposite of the way that God is pulling you. And the temptation is there to take the beaten path. <laughs> but God is calling you to go and be a trailblazer for him. You might not take, don't always have to take the beaten path, but take the straight and narrow way because it is the way that leads unto life. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And so as he's calling us to live spirit-led lives, Christ first people, seeking God first, he's freeing us up because it takes freedom to step into places you've never been before. It does. It can be intimidating. It can be nerving. Sometimes you got to go against the grain and, and go against people's criticisms. And sometimes they're standing back just waiting for you to fail. But the devil is a liar. And greater is he in you than he that is within this world. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I don't have trailblazer anywhere in my notes today. It wasn't words that came to me last night, today, or at any point in my preparation for this service. But I just feel like it's come out by the Holy Ghost today and that somebody needs just to take a hold of that because God wants you to be a trailblazer for your family and blaze the way. Now, when you're a blazer, sometimes things got to get burnt up because fire is dangerous and fire is powerful. And when things get in its way, it comes with heat. And there's some things in your path that might be trying to stand against you. And you've got to come with the power. And you've got to come with the fire. And if you're going to blaze the trail, you're going to have to be filled with the Spirit of God. You're going to have to put on the armor of God. You're going to have to allow yourself to be discipled and become a true follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I already know. I can hear all the, the, the things that the devil's trying to tell you, disqualifying you. And all the fears that try and rise up and say, well, I've already done this and I live like this. And, and what if I fail? And what if I fail? And what if I'm not good enough? Don't, don't you see that some, those, those, those very lies, those very doubts, those, those very things, that, that those are the things that got to be burnt up. Because that's the enemy trying to stop you from yielding and surrendering your life to Jesus. Yes, amen. Well, the enemy tells you, get your life in order before you come to Christ. No, you don't know how to do that. There's a reason your life's in disorder. Because we're good at making disorder. We need the God of order. Hallelujah. To help us make things right. Amen. To understand his principles. His divine way. Because so many times it's the opposite of what the world teaches us. Where the world teaches us this is how you're supposed to live life. But yet our Heavenly Father is showing us a different path, a different way, a different spirit, a different heart, a different attitude. Come on, church. A different mind. The world tells you to be a taker and collect all you can. But God says be a giver. God says be a giver. Yeah. 
Because if you give, it'll be given again. Hallelujah. Give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together, and running over. If you would understand that what God has put in your hand is something there that you are able to sow. And as you sow, you reap. And what you give to God, He is able to take it. He is able to multiply. It might not be a lot. It might be a couple of fishes. It might be a couple of loaves of bread. But you take that and you give it to Jesus. He blesses it. He multiplies it. So that it can feed a multitude. But the world tells us just to hold on to everything so tight that we don't sow. And so we hold on to our bread. Don't take my bread. Don't take my bread. Got to keep my bread. You're just after my bread. Go to church. Those preachers just after your bread. But this is going to get ate up. And this is going to get consumed. Yes. Hallelujah. And there's going to be demands put on us. And there's going to be withdrawals made. That's right. Whether we like it or not. Yep. But what will you choose? And where will you give? Or will you just heap up until one day it's just taken? Because the world comes and it'll, it'll take this piece here. And say, and, and I mean, there's, there's things that put up. Uh, 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 a demand on us the things that we have to do in life I get that but sometimes we don't have God first because if this is my loaf of bread and I was to say well what's God's oh, yeah. I, I would like to say that it's the first one it's the first one because I, I, I seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and I'll be mindful of him first in my life even before other things now, the world will try to tell you your family is more important than anything. But it's not. Because your relationship with God is even above that. And as I've been saying, love God, love your family better. <laughs> I don't care if you're quiet, I'm going to preach. Love God, love your family better. Because family is very important. And God cares for your family more than you care for your family. But love God first and watch what God does in your family. Amen. I'll say it again. Love God first and watch what God does in your family. Amen. And I realize we juggle a lot of things. So we, we were trying to figure out things in life. And I have three kids of my own. And so there's a lot of things you've got to figure out sometimes. But sometimes things get scrambled up. Right? Amen. Talk to me a little bit. Sometimes things get scrambled up and mixed up a little bit. So sometimes we've got to step back a little bit and say, no, no, I realize that maybe I, I, I've let what was God's be given to something else or something else has taken that place. And I've got to come back to giving God what's his first because life comes along and it'll take everything from you. It'll say, give me this and you got a hydro bill and you got a car payment and your sister needs you and your brother needs you and, and, and they need your help over there today. And your work called you in again and, and all of these things and all of a sudden all your bread is gone. And then you're like, oh, I didn't give anything to the Lord. But this can relate to any place in our life. What happens though? We're like, well, I can get something for the Lord here. And we're taking what's left over. Hello? Yeah. We're taking what's left over and trying just to give that and say, you know, this is my offering. But the Lord wants us to seek Him first. Yeah. I, I, I must be hitting the It's truth. And where it hits us, we need to hear it. Yeah. And we just need to be able to look at our lives. It's not condemnation. It's God's goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And if you're hearing it as condemnation today, that's, that's because the devil's trying to mess up the message. Yeah. I said that's because the devil's trying to mess up the message. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's trying to mess up how you hear it. And so all you do is feel like, you, yeah, I'm just, I'm just no good at this. I'll just quit. I can't do this. But he's a liar. Yes. It's God's goodness that leads us to repentance. Yes. It's God's goodness that shows us the straight and narrow way. Yes. It's God's goodness that leads us in the path of life. 
where we serve the Lord and we are that trailblazer. And then we're leaving things behind. Bread comes behind because we have lived a life that is given to Jesus. We have given our lives over to him and we're leaving these breadcrumbs behind us. And our children are coming along and our grandchildren are coming along. And they're picking up these things that we are leaving behind because we've been followers of Christ. Because we've loved him. I'm closing with these verses here, okay? We're going to receive communion today. You heard me say recently, I, when, I remember when I was a boy in church, and I, I, I heard these scriptures, and they were talk of, talking about love, how you had to love God first and love God the most. And, and they, they talked about this scripture, which I didn't understand as a child, where, where in Luke 14 and 25, Jesus says, And there were, went great multitudes with him. He has a mega church. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and also his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. Oh, he's good at fit in the crowd. <laughs> Amen. He's good at fit in the crowd. He's got a multitude, a mega church. Hey, why don't you just tell us something happy? And he just turns around and says, If you don't hate mom, dad, Billy, Bobby, Sarah, all of this, you can't be my disciple. Amen. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And I remember as a boy, I think, well, I can't hate my mom. I can't do that. And just being honest. But understanding now what it is that the Lord is talking about here. I like how it reads it in the Amplified Bible, in the AMTC, the Verse 25 and 26, when it says, Now huge crowds were going along with Jesus. And he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother in the sense of indifference to or relative disregard for them in comparison with his attitude toward God, and likewise his wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple." So unless you love God so much yes. that it's more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. 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 And you say, well, what is, is that neglect? No, it's not neglect. This is what I'm telling you today. God is love. Mm -hmm. God is good. Amen. God is faithful. Yeah. And he shows us how to be good fathers. Yeah, and he shows us how to be good mothers. He shows us how to be good examples. And he teaches us how to be leaders. Where we wouldn't know how to be it if not for him. But as we fall in love with him, we find ourselves in the proper order of things. And maybe where you would have once neglected, now you don't neglect. Because you're in love with God and you have a clearer picture of things. Hallelujah. And he has restructured your life. Hallelujah. And positioning you where blessings flow. And I know he wants to pour out blessings on you. And on your house. In 2023. I know he does. Yes. I know he does. Hallelujah. I know he wants to bless you. Hallelujah. Seek him first. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Yeah, Would you stand with me this afternoon. I want us to pray, and then I'm going to ask everybody to come forward today as we take part in communion. And we celebrate the death and burial of the Lord Jesus and his resurrection as well. I just want to pray for you today that you would have ears to hear the things that the Lord said, and that you would understand in your heart what God is saying to you today. Because the Bible talked about how the thief comes and tries to take away the word that was sown in hearts. Amen. When people hear the word, the thief comes and tries to take it away. And he tries to fill up that, that place with other things and other cares and other worries. And I'm not good enough. But I pray for you today that in the name of the Lord Jesus, your mind is clear. Your ears are open. Your heart is free Amen. that you might hear today.
the things that the Lord says to you. And I pray for you and I pray for your families that you would be positioned where his goodness will be poured out in your life. That it will amaze you. That it will amaze you. And what the Lord is doing. And what the Lord has done. I say again he wants to bless you. And so I say today be blessed in the name of Jesus. As I pray over you and I pray over your house. I say the Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. The Lord God be gracious to you. Make his face shine upon you. Lift his countenance upon you. And give you peace. And give you shalom. I pray that your homes be filled with God's peace. I pray that your lives will radiate his glory. I, I, I pray that the presence of the Lord will fill your heart. And you will know and experience the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. That you will taste and see that the Lord is good. And you will experience God's presence. His life changing, transforming presence. You will experience the presence of God. I pray for you today. The chains that have tried to restrict you are bound and broken in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today. The shame is removed from off of your life in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke the spirit of shame from your life. It's an assassin that has tried to come against you to steal. But I rebuke the spirit of shame from your life in the name of Jesus. And I say be free. Be free from the spirit of shame in Jesus mighty day that your heart will be filled today and you will know that you are loved and you will know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and beautiful in the eyes of God. I rebuke shame from your life. I pray today that God wash over you and he cleanse your life from the spirit of shame. That you be free to serve the Lord and that your life be as though a new window has just opened up. And a fresh air and a fresh breeze is breathing into your life. Hallelujah. And the God is just breathing into your life in this season. A new beginning. Another chance. A freshness. Healing. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Would you receive that today? And just let the Holy Ghost breathe on you. And breathe into your life. You know, I want to say, I want to say this. Just we could begin to make our way forward here. I, I would ask you all just to come up to the front as we take communion together, so that we so that we can just do that as a family here today. Do it together, the body of Christ. But I, I just want to say this today that it's so good to see Jerry here. And some of you might not know that. Jerry almost died a few months ago. Kev, wouldn't you say he was pretty close to death's door? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I mean, Kev, we were talking one day when Jerry didn't answer the phone, and we were like, there's a little bit of concern there. But my wife was commenting, we got off the phone with Jerry, and my wife was just commenting of how we've never seen him so full of life. <laughs> it's the truth. And there's a joy there. Amen? There's a joy that has come. You see that, Kev, too? <laughs> there's a joy that has come in his life as the Lord brought him back from that place of death and has breathed a new breath of life into him in, in, in his golden years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen? And so we bless Jerry. We bless glory. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter how old you are today. Amen. The Lord is able to breathe a freshness in your life and make your years great, prosperous years. That they would be years that are full and blessed and prosperous. Amen. I need, a, I need someone to bring me one too, please. Thank you. Bible said, as often as we do this, we declare his death. We make a declaration here today. Oh, it's powerful. It's powerful. We make declaration of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. We make declaration of the payment that he's paid. 
that his body was bruised, his body was whipped, and his body was beaten. But it wasn't in vain. It wasn't show. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we make that declaration today over our bodies, over our lives, over our families. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We are healed. And healing is our bread. So we receive breakthroughs. We receive physical healing. We receive emotional healing. We receive mental healing. Knowing that he has suffered. Even the, the crown of thorns that he wore on his head. He suffered for the places where my head is tormented. Where my head is full of care. He suffered for trauma. He suffered for it. He suffered for your past. No matter how great your past, his suffering's greater. And by his stripes, we are healed. And no matter where sickness is trying to work against you today, claim his promise. Claim his promise. He is still Jehovah Rapha. He is still the Lord who heals us. Father, we thank you for the bread that we receive today. And with thanksgiving, we declare your death. We say thank you, Jesus, for the body broken for us. We don't have enough words, but thank you. And we receive with thanksgiving today. Let us break our bread. Let us receive together today. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Philip, I'm going to ask you if you would just pray and just give thanks for the blood of Jesus today.
promises to you because they are doing great things in your name, Lord. Everything for your glory, Lord. That's why we are gathered here, Lord, to love you and worship you. And to show our appreciation to you, Lord. And also how much we appreciate these two, Lord. And we just the blood of Jesus over them each and every day. That you will give them wisdom and strength to you to guide this church to victory. Amen. 2023, Lord. We know you are coming soon, Lord. And we wait that wonderful time. Heavenly Father, watch over them, protect them, and show our love to them each and every day, Lord. They know they are loved, that they are following the path you set before them, Lord. In Jesus' amazing and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year.